بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now after that inshallah we now move on to some of the other anbiya that are mentioned in the Quran there are some Ilyas alayhi salam Ilyas the prophet Ilyas may peace be upon him the prophet Ilyas some know him as Elisha may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon him and the prophet Dhul Kifil these Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mention much detail about only the prophet Ilyas Allah says in one place a little bit of detail so in the other places only a name is mentioned and a word of praise that they were Al Akhyar Al Akhyar meaning they were good people they were the best of the lot and so on as we said whenever we hear a narration that is against the dignity and respect accorded to a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by Allah we should throw the narration out because Allah says these people were chosen they were chosen so if the prophets were bad the people would have been able to justify their wrongdoings to say look you also a sinner what you telling us so this is why we need to be careful of some of these narrations that are seeping in from others may Allah protect us Allah says إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Ilyas was from amongst those who were sent. He was a Nabi. When he told his people, Won't you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What was their crime? أَتَدْعُونَ بَعْلًا وَتَذَرُونَ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ وَرَبَّ آبَائِكُمُ الْأَوَّلِينَ How can you worship this idol known as Ba'al? And you're leaving the creator of everything, the most beautiful creator of everything, the best of creators, in the sense that he is the one who makes from nothing. We've explained the difference between when people say, I created this. They did not create anything. They only transformed the creation of Allah from one to another. And they had wood, now they have a chair. They had metal, now they've got a motor vehicle. That's not creation. Creation is when you say, be suddenly it's in front of you this is creation so, so Elias alayhi salam is telling his people how can you worship all these items and this main idol that you're worshiping and you're leaving the one who's the maker the creator the supreme creator Allah who is my creator and yours my Rabb and yours and the and the Rabb of your forefathers <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they belied him. So what happened to them? They were punished. The punishment was brought forward and they were made present to where the punishment was. They were punished. We don't know more about this prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we move on to a very famous Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom his birth and all the details of his young life are not mentioned in the Quran. Remember we are trying to derive lessons of the stories of the prophets or from the stories of the prophets in the Quran. The prophet Zakaria, he was a prophet and at his time, the one who used to lead the prayers was a man very pious, what we, what we would call today the Imam or the Shaykh. He was a very, very pious man known as Imran. Imran was related to Zakaria. How? They were married to two sisters. So Zakaria alayhi salam and Imran, the two of them were related in that way and they had a link and a connection. Both of them did not have children. Both of them, their wives could not bear. And one day the wife of Imran, she used to pray. These were very pious people, very, very pious people. The wife of Imran, he, she, she used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never losing hope. It is reported that one day she saw a bird giving a little bit of food bringing some food and flying in to feed the little chicklet and when the bird put the food into the beak of its little baby and the wind blew it took its wing and it covered its own baby and she felt the desire to have a child at that age she said ya allah grant me a child ya allah we are serving you this is my husband he is leading the people in prayer and so on. Ya Allah, bless us with some goodness. And she continued praying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded her call. But she had made a promise. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. إِذْ قَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ عِمْرَانَ رَبِّ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِي مُحَرَّرًا فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي 
إنك أنت السميع العليم. Remember the time when the wife of Imran had conceived. She then made a pledge to us to say, Ya Allah, I am dedicating the child who is in my womb for your service completely. The child will not be doing anything else besides your service, serving this house of yours, serving this place of worship and totally for your service dedicated. And this is what I have promised. You are the one who has heard and you are all knowing. This is how pious they were. Mashallah. When we have children, we make dua. Allah keep them pious. Allah make them the coolness of your eyes. Allah make them inshallah pious people, the champions of the deen. But the others who don't have belief, as soon as the child is born, they bring a football. They put it here we are. As soon as the child is born, they have a tennis racket. There you are. Or a golf stick. Allah protect us. I hope that's not the same golf stick used to break the windows of the vehicle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So it's important for us to learn a lesson. Allah accepted it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard this call. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when she gave birth, she said, Oh my Rabb, I have given birth to a female child. Allahu Akbar. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. And Allah knew best. Allah already knew more than anyone else what she was going to give birth to and the fact that she had given birth to a female child. Allah is saying, and a female is not like a male. Now that is a verse of the Quran. What does it mean? Let us understand this issue of equality in Islam. In Islam, men and women are totally equal when it comes to their access to their Rabb and their Maker. A man becomes pious, a woman becomes pious. A man achieves rewards, a woman achieves rewards. A man, the sins will be held against him. The same applies to a woman. A man has access to Allah, a woman has access to Allah. Everything there, spiritually, subhanallah, the access to the Creator is equal. But Allah is telling us that physically we have created you differently and emotionally we have created you differently and this is why sometimes when people say no islam treats a woman unfairly they don't realize and understand when allah's made something allah has created something in a different way and allah's created certain responsibilities for one that the other cannot have whether they like it or not so when it comes to pregnancy childbearing breastfeeding and so on a man cannot do it whether he likes it or not it's not his job and this is why a woman can achieve closeness to Allah through certain acts of worship that a man cannot one of them is childbearing the other is she gives up her whole home and everything when she gets married Allah has made her such that she can adjust better than a man when it comes to an environment she is created in that way and so many other acts of worship she can engage in if a woman dies whilst bearing a child or whilst giving birth or in the sickness connect, connected to the women's issues allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants her paradise on condition that she was patient can a man engage in those acts of worship the answer is no and allah says and we've given man some authority as well so in certain ways a woman is higher than a man and in certain ways a man is higher than a woman and in the other ways they are all equal what is so difficult about understanding this why do we still want to defy it and this is why i tell people who say no 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 we are absolutely equal i say look it depends what you're looking at and it depends how in what context you are speaking why do we have mr and mrs why do you have the extra s may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding it's a fact why do we have really why do we have to say this is male and female? Let's just say male for everyone. This is a male and this is another male. Allahu Akbar. Would, we, would that happen? So common logic tells us we're different. Why then do we want to shove down the throats of the people? No, we are equal in every way. The problem is when we say equality, sometimes you find some males using it to oppress females. This is where they are wrong. And today you find women calling males names and fighting for gender equality in order to rise above the man so it is reverse may allah protect us so then 
in a few years time, we'll be fighting for our rights. Remember, male is M-A-L-E. A female has an F-E over and above that. Mr. is M-R. A female has an S after that. So it's much more than we, what we have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So even in letters, they are higher than us. Obviously, that's on a lighter note. Don't hold it against me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَىٰ Man is not like a woman. She had said, I would like this child to be dedicated to the monastery or to this uh, place of worship and so on. But now we have a problem. What is the problem? It is a female child. But anyway, وَإِنِّي مَرْيَمْ This mother is saying, the wife of Imran, she is saying, I have given her the name Maryam, Mary. Who was this Mary? The mother of Jesus. May peace be upon him. She was now born. And this is what her mother had said. Subhanallah. Wa inni sammaytuha Maryama wa inni u'idhuha bika wa dhurriyataha min ash-shaytanir rajeem. I have given her the name Maryam and ya Allah I seek your protection for her and for her progeny for her offspring to come from shaitan the accursed so in narration in sahih muslim it is reported that rasulullah says when a child is born shaitan comes and poke the child he's jealous so the child cries so this is the the interpretation religiously of why the child cries as soon as they're born obviously from a medical aspect there are other reasons the lungs inflate and everything else happens and so on but the child is pricked there were two only two whom that did not happen to one was mary and one was jesus maryam alayhi salam may peace be upon her and the other one was isa alayhi salam may peace be upon him because the mother had already asked allah to protect them from shaitan and allah gave them that particular dua said okay there you are protected from shaitan now what had happened there was a problem as she was born they took her to this place of worship and they wanted to fulfill the promise she wanted to fulfill the promise for the child there was a problem in that whilst she was pregnant the father passed away who was the father imran the sheikh the great sheikh he passed away when he passed away and the child was born an orphan so maryam was an orphan mary may peace be upon her There was a debate who should take care of this child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يُلْقُونَ أَقْلَامَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ يَكْفُلُ مَرْيَمْ You were not there when they had this debate and they drew lots as to who should look after this child Maryam, who should bring her up, under whose care. So, the priests and the others, the religious people and the pious, they said, no, we all want. Each one was claiming the right. And Zakaria, alayhi salam, who was the Nabi, he said, look, I am her uncle. My wife and her mother are sisters. As an uncle, as a Nabi, it is my right. They said, no, what gives you the right? Let us draw lots. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, were not there when they were drawing the lots. But anyway, we've told it to you. But this is what... They drew lots. What happened? They drew, they took their pens. And it is reported, two, three different narrations, but the Quran does say they drew lots with a pen, with pens. Each one took their pen and put their pen and they had a little child come to pick a pen. And the child picked the pen of Zakaria. Alayhi salam. They said, no, we've got to try again. So they took their pens, put it into a little wooden casket or like a pencil case sort of a thing. And they said, we're putting it in the stream any one of these pens that flow against the stream against the flow of the water that will be the person so only zakaria alayhi salam started flowing the other way the rest were going down there's a second sign they said no now let's do it for the last time if these whoever's flows with the stream will have the child now that didn't really make sense because all of them were supposed to flow so Allah made it such that everyone else has flowed against the stream and this one flew, flowed with it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kaffalaha Zakariya. It was Zakariya who took her and looked after her. Now there was something strange. They had kept her as she was growing up in the room known as a mihrab is a little corner of worship. 
كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا قال يا مريم أنا لك هذا Every time Zakariya alayhi salam went there, she was engaged always in acts of worship in remembrance from a very, very young age. And she used to clean and she used to keep the place tidy. And she was a person who was dedicated for the service of this place of worship. Very, very pious woman, woman of the highest levels, but she was still a young girl. Every time Zakariya alayhi salam went, he would find something amazing. She had food, fruit that was not from the season they were in. So the fruit of summer was found with her in winter as fresh as ever. And the fruit in winter was found with her in summer as fresh as ever. So he says, Anna laki hadha. Where did you get this from? She says, Huwa min I got it from Allah. Inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Allah gives sustenance to whomsoever he wishes without account. Allah doesn't take into account that it is summer and it is winter. If he wants, he can give you anything. Now these were miracles that were happening at the time. So Zakariya alayhi salam saw it. He was the only one who noticed. And he told himself, Subhanallah, I want to draw an example here. This is the Qudra and the power of Allah. This little young girl is telling me Allah can give whatever he wants. I know that I'm a Nabi. But if Allah can give off-season fruit, then surely I'm an old man. I don't have any children. I am equivalent to off-season. When it comes to children, Allah can give me children. That's exactly what he thought. He says, my wife is barren. She was barren. She could not bear children. But he says, that would be equivalent to being off-season. But still Allah can give her a child. So he raised his hands. Allah says, Hunalika. At that juncture, Zakaria raised his hands and he says, Oh Allah, grant me a pious offspring. Ya Allah, you are the one who can hear my prayer. You are hearing me. At that juncture, in Surah Maryam, there's a whole surah named after this child Mary. There is no chapter of the Bible named after Mary, may peace be upon her, but the Quran has an entire chapter named after her. Mary, may peace be upon her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her in every single way. So, this man in Surah Maryam, Allah says, Kaf ha ya Allah starts the surah with powerful letters. Only he knows the meaning of those letters. Then he says, remember the mercy of Allah upon his slave, Zakaria. When he called out to his Rabb, he called out with humbleness, humility, silence, and between him and Allah, he called out. What did he say? Allahu Akbar. Qala Rabbi inni wahana al-azmu minni. Oh my Rabb, my bones are now weak. Washta'ala al-ra'su shayba. And my hair is grey. Walam akum bidu'aika Rabbi shaqiyya. But I will never lose hope in you. I will continue praying to you. My prayer will never be wasted. May Allah grant children to those who don't have offspring. Remember, never lose hope. Look at Zakaria. He says, Ya Allah, I'm now old. One wonders, his bones were now weak. He says, my hair is gray. I'm not going to lose hope, Ya Allah. Subhanallah. He says, Oh Allah, grant me a child who will inherit me. And he will be an heir of the family of Jacob. An heir in what? Prophets did not inherit or did not leave behind wealth for someone to inherit. But the inheritance being spoken about is prophethood here and the service to Allah. Ya Allah, I want a male child who can continue my lineage and this goodness and the family of Jacob. He can follow the footsteps of the Prophet Jacob. May peace be upon him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
Ya Zakaria. We called out to him, O Zakaria. Inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismuhu Yahya lam naj'al lahu min qablu samiyya. We are giving you good news of a child that your wife shall conceive and bear. And we have named him Yahya or John in the English language. We have given him that name. Nobody before him has ever had that name. Allah says. And no one will be similar to him in certain qualities. He had some qualities which he was the only one who had those qualities. So amazingly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about Yahya. And Allah named him. Look at this. Allah named him Yahya. The name was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The name John Yahya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the beauty. I still find the word, the term, the Arabic term is far more sweeter than the English term. May Allah grant us a deep understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this man, he was thankful to Allah. But at the same time, he was, he needed a sign. How can I go and tell my wife, okay, you're going to expect and you know you're expecting and so on. How can I say this and what will happen? I'm old. He says, Qala Rabbi anna yakunu li ghulamun wa kanat imra'ati aqira wa qad balagtu min al-kibari itiyya Oh Allah, how can I have a child now? Now he is shocked. He's thankful but at the same time he's shocked. He wants confirmation. Ya Allah, how can I have a child now? Ya Rabbi, how can I have a ghulam, a little baby boy? You've already given the name and everything. Ya Allah, how can I have this boy? When? My wife is barren and I am so old, Ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala kathalik. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He told him that didn't we create you before? This is how Allah creates. Allah says, be. And it is. In the Arabic language, we say, Amruhu bayna al-kafi wa noon the instruction of Allah is between a calf and the noon. Those two letters put together make an instruction that is called the word of Allah. When Allah gives that word, things happen. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zakaria says, Qala Rabbi ja'alli ayah. Oh Allah, give me a sign. When I see that sign, I will know that now she has conceived. Qala ayatuka alla tukallima nasa thalathata ayyamin illa ramza. He says, Oh Allah. In fact, Allah says, Oh Zakaria, your sign will be that there will come three days in which you will not be able to speak to people except through signs. Then praise Allah, engage in His remembrance, constantly be thankful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakaria alayhi salam was very very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then as he went out, فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنَ الْمِحْرَابِ فَأَوْحَىٰ إِلَيْهِمْ أَنْ سَبِّحُوا بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّا In fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this verse I just read is referring to Yahya alayhi salam later on. But we go back to Zakaria alayhi salam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly the day came when he could not speak. And he knew this is the sign of Allah. He got up and he's addressing people with signs. Illa Ramzan. He had these signs and he's telling people to obey Allah and so on. And days later, the news was out. Subhanallah, his wife was expecting and she gave birth. Subhanallah. To this messenger, a great messenger known as Yahya alayhi salatu was salam. Now, Yahya alayhi salam was the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was blessed with so many good qualities. Allah says, فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنَ الْمِحْرَابِ فَأَوْحَىٰ إِلَيْهِمْ أَنْ سَبِّحُوا بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّا يَا يَحْيَىٰ خُذِ الْكِتَابَ بِقُوَّةً وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ صَبِيَّا Allah says, we gave Yahya the book and we told him, hold fast to this Torah. The Torah was given, reiterated, repeated to Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. It is reported that he had memorized it, the Torah. 
and he was sent to Banu Israel. Remember, all these messengers were sent to Banu Israel. They are the children of Jacob. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We gave him wisdom, knowledge from a very, very young age. We gave him knowledge, we gave him wisdom, we gave him so much goodness. And Allah says, More than that, over and above that, we gave him something else. We made him so sympathetic to the others, not only to mankind, but even to the other creatures of Allah. He had such a deep love for not only human beings, but all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was from a very young age. He was different. Allah says, we granted him that wisdom from a young age. He was not like the other children who played and they lied and they joked. He was always a serious child. He was always interested in learning. He used to read the Torah. He used to learn. He used to sit in prayer. He used to go to the place of worship and pray and so on. And he knew his aunt who was an aunt of his. In fact, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a good memory. Maryam alayha salatu was salam was his cousin. Because Yahya was the child of Zakaria and Maryam was the daughter of the sister of the wife of Zakaria alayhima as -salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this young man grew up imagine in the environment of goodness with pure people around him and so on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says we gave him Hanan we gave him the sympathy and the love of the people and the rest of the creatures and we also purified him in every way and at the same time we made him righteous and Allah says we made him dutiful to his parents and he was not disobedient in any way nor was he from amongst the arrogant Jabbar here is referring to arrogance he was not from amongst the arrogant nor was he from amongst those who was disobedient to his parents he was a beautiful child and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how he was a Sayyid he was a person a very very well respected person he did not marry he did not feel within himself the inclination to marry so he was a person who was dedicated completely to the religion he didn't even marry Allah uses the word hasur a person who did not marry and he was a prophet and he was from amongst the righteous look at Allah praising the prophet Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam it is reported that later on when he used to call his people he spoke to them with so much goodness they loved him all of them loved him he used to make them cry they used to sit and listen to him and they used to cry tears used to roll down their eyes when they used to hear to Yahya when they used to hear him relate from the Torah and they used to hear him reminding them of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent down now the other hand you have Zakaria alayhi salam the father of Yahya he died how he died there are several narrations one of the Israeli riwayat make mention of the fact that he was murdered and he was murdered by the king at the time and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all but there is mention of a verse that inshallah we will close with a little bit later on when inshallah we reach the hour by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Yahya when he speaks about these people he mentions the names of the prophets Zakaria wa Yahya and then he speaks he says innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrati wa yad'unana raghaban wa rahaba wa kanu lana khashi'in they used to make haste towards goodness anything good they used to rush towards it any act of worship something to please Allah they used to rush towards it and they used to call out to us having hope in our mercy and fearing our punishment as well and they were from amongst the humble those who were dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the pious they were always concentrating in acts of worship and they had fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day the king of the time the king of the time and his name is not mentioned but he heard that there is this man and he knew him quite well as well Yahya but now he had heard that people love him more than you you are a king you are the ruler people dislike you but there is one man people are flocking to him in their thousands 
and they love him. They want to listen to him every time, moment of the day and night. Who is he? His name is Yahya. The king became jealous. Who is this man? We need to see what he's doing. So on. But in the interim, something else had happened. Allah decided something else would happen. This king fell in love with his own niece. That means his own brother's daughter. And he wanted to marry her. And Yahya was a messenger who used to get up and lecture regularly. And he used to remind people of what is permissible and what is prohibited without fearing. So he constantly said to people that it is forbidden to do this. It is forbidden to do that. And people used to take heed and they used to listen to him because of the way he spoke to them. And because they knew that this man loves us so passionately, he really wants to see that we are saved from the fire of Jahannam. So he said in one of his lectures that it is forbidden to marry a niece and whoever does that, he will be cursed by the Almighty and it is a great sin, abomination, work of the devil and so on. And the king got to hear this. He became very, very angry. Why is he lecturing? Why is he speaking on a controversial topic? Why? He knows what is happening here. This is controversy. We don't want it. Imagine to this day you have people when you get up and say something correct, they call it controversial because they don't want to hear what is right. That is a sign of failure. As I always say, it is the clutch of the devil. We'd better release it before we go too far. So Yahya, he hit the nail on the head and he says, why are these people or the king is now saying, why is this man saying that you are not allowed to marry your niece when he knows that I want to do this? Now he couldn't do that because had he did that, the people would have reneged against him, probably stood up against him, maybe fought him. There would have been chaos. So he decided, okay, let's hold it for a while. But this niece was also a culprit. She also did not rest. She said, no, I'm not going to stop the marriage. which was about to happen. And this one man stopping. It can't be. So she began to start sending different types of messages to the king and dancing for him and singing for him at different occasions and so on and luring him until he really felt this desire that I need this woman in my life. So she said, no, you have to marry me. Defy this man. Imagine a woman ruling the whole roost. One woman creating havoc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, she said, no, you get rid of this man. You, you must marry me. Number one. Number two is as Mahar, I want the head of Yahya. Look at how dirty, filthy, ugly, bad, wretched, evil this woman is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. These stories are not mentioned in the Quran as fairy tales. They are there for us to apply in our own communities and in our own societies and in our own situations. Wherever they fit, we fit them to learn a lesson. And the idea is to learn a lesson for myself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. What had happened? The king decided, okay, that's it. He sends his army and he told his men, we need the head of this man. Yet the man was loved by everyone. They went into him whilst he was engaged in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mihrab, in that place of worship. They cut his head off and took it back to the king. The prophet Yahya, John, may peace be upon him. He had met the Prophet Jesus and they had lived, they had discussed, inshallah, we will see that tomorrow. But we are speaking now of how he was brutally murdered. And Allah says in the Quran, and we will end with this verse. وَيَقْتُلُونَ الَّذِينَ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْقِسْطِ مِنَ النَّاسِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ Those who disbelieve and they go out killing the messengers of Allah and they go out killing those who are instructing them to do good and those who are upholding the justice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
let them know that there is a severe punishment awaiting them those are the ones whose deeds have been wasted in this world and in the next and indeed in the life after death they will have nobody to help them at all this is a powerful verse that allah makes mention of in surat ali imran when he's speaking of the family of imran that family was a very small family and a whole chapter in the quran is named after the family of imran it was made up of imran his wife his daughter mary or maryam and her child jesus or isa alayhi salam the quran has named a whole chapter after the family of imran another whole chapter after mary herself maryam may peace be upon her we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness the lesson is when we get irritated by those who are telling us Allah has said this and Allah has said that and this is the law of Allah and this is what it is supposed to be that is the first sign of rejection from within we need to be careful let us extinguish that fire as it starts don't allow yourself to be irritated when people press the right buttons and when they are speaking about items we are guilty of involving in because that is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like the prophet Yahya when he lectured them they got upset and they started saying controversial and we don't want it and he shouldn't say this they ended up killing him some of us may Allah protect us we would like to extinguish people we would like to remove people from the face of the earth when they tell us brother you are totally wrong you are heading in the wrong direction be warned of a punishment and so on we don't like it let us change our ways and habits inshallah let us love those who correct us that is the only way we will improve وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك